Right. So in this video, we're going to go over applying systems of linear inequalities, right? Uh, the first part of the video is going to be uh, just translating phrases into an inequality um, like this, all right? So key phrases we need to look for. Um, if we're going to write greater than x as our inequality, uh, that's going to come from phrases like the words greater than x, more than x, or higher than x, something like that, Okay. For less than x, we would actually hear, read a phrase like less than x or lower than x, okay? Uh, when we include the or equal to to either of these, so this would be greater than or equal to x, we would see greater than or equal to x, but more commonly we would see at least x or no less than x, all right? These would include uh, the x value that we might be looking for, okay? Less than or equal to x, at most x, and no more than x, would be accompanied by or translated to the inequality less than or equal to x, okay? All right, let's read example one here, part A, and let's translate it into a system of linear inequalities, all right? So Jackson buys and sells gaming consoles to make extra money. He sells PS5s for $550 and Xboxes for $650. One month he sold X PS5s and Y Xboxes. His monthly goal was to sell at least 25 consoles. Jackson met his goal and brought in more than $20,000. Write a system of inequalities to describe Jackson's situation. Well, the first thing we want to do is define our variables, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say X is equal to the number of PS5 sold, and I'm going to say that Y is the number of Xboxes sold, all right? So once we define the variables, it becomes a lot easier uh, to write out our system, Okay. So in reading through this, one of the key things that comes up is he wants to sell at least 25 consoles, okay? So at least 25 consoles. So that means the sum of these two, x plus y, would have to be greater than or equal to 25, okay? So that's gonna be the first inequality in my system, all right? The next thing we know is that he brought in more than $20,000, okay? Well, he sold PS5s for 550, he sold Xboxes for 650 so we put those together. The 550 goes with the X, because that way PS5s match up with PS5s, okay? And the 650 the price for the Xbox, goes with Y, okay? So 550 times each PS5 sold plus 650 times each Xbox sold would be greater than $20,000, all right? So this would be our system of equations, system of inequalities, excuse me for that situation, right? We're not going to solve here. We're not going to look at possible solutions. We just want to be able to write the, uh, the inequality of the system uh, by translating, okay? Look at part B here, all right? Pause the video here and try to write the system based on the given information. Let me give you a hint before you get started. There's going to be more than two inequalities in this one, all right? So pause the video, try to write out the system based on the information in the problem, and then come back and check your work. All right, first thing again, we want to define our variables. X is going to be the number of $7 prizes bought, okay? And Y is going to be the number of $10 prizes bought, okay? So now let's look at all the information provided in here, and let's break it down and write what we can into inequality form. All right, so the first thing we see is that he wants to buy at least 25 prizes, okay? So X plus Y is greater than or equal to 25, okay? Next thing we could talk about is he wants to buy at least 12 of the cheaper prizes, okay? So X has to be greater than or equal to 12, right? He also wants to buy at least six of the more expensive prizes, so Y has to be greater than or equal to six. And finally, he doesn't want to spend more than $225, okay? So he wants to spend no more than that. So 7x, okay, the cost of the $7 prizes plus 10y, the cost of the $10 prizes, has to be less than or equal to 225 okay? So this system of inequalities uh, would mirror this situation, all right? Okay, these inequalities are called constraints, all right, and I'm going to use that word constraints as we go into the next part of the video. All right, so here we're going to solve these word problems. We're going to write the system of inequalities. 
we're going to graph the inequalities, okay? We're going to make sure we shade correctly, and then we're going to kind of analyze the solution set. So remember, there are many possible solutions that will work for problems like this, okay? Assuming there are solutions. There could be no solutions. Um, but in this case, we're going to have many possible solutions, and we're going to go through a few of those, all right? So, the girls' basketball team is hosting a fundraiser. They would like to raise at least $1,000 by selling candles for $10 and flower arrangements for $12. They estimate they, they will be able to sell at most 200 items, okay? So, first thing, again, we want to define our variables. X equals candles sold. Y equals flower arrangements sold, okay? I would always stick with X and Y just because we're going to be graphing these in the XY plane. So, you can call these variables whatever you want to, but I, I kind of prefer to stick with X and Y. All right, sell at most 200 items. So the sum of those two has to be less than or equal to 200. That's the first inequality. This one's only going to have two. Um, and the second one, we want to make at least $1,000. So we've got the price for candles would be 10x, plus the money coming in for the flower arrangements, 12y, uh, needs to be greater than or equal to $1,000. Okay, so I'm going to go to Desmos. You can graph these. These are both in what we would call standard form. So you can graph these by finding intercepts, and the graph should be pretty easy to come up with. Okay? So first inequality, x plus y less than or equal to 200. My intercepts are both at 200. Okay? 200, 0 there. 0, 200 there. So at most 200 items, so we would shade below this. Okay? So we're talking about this. All right? We're not listing any non-negative constraints here, but we should know that I can't sell a negative number of uh, candles or flower arrangements. So we're really looking at this triangle right here uh, for this uh, inequality, all right? The next one, okay, 10x plus 12y greater than or equal to 1,000. I go to the intercepts here for flower arrangements. We would have to sell 83.333 to make that $1,000. And 100 of the candles would do that. So we would graph using those intercepts. All right. So inequality here greater than or equal to 1,000. So we're, that would be this blue region here. All right. And again, we're non-negative. Not that it matters as much here. Okay. So the overlap, again, we're in quadrant one here, is this kind of dark purplish uh, region. It almost looks like a trapezoid. Okay. It's not a trapezoid, but it kind of looks like one. All right, so this is what you would graph um, on your graph paper. I'm just doing it on Desmos here. All right, so if 120 candles were sold, use your graph to determine two possible amounts of flower arrangements that were sold to help the girls accomplish their fundraising. Okay, so let's go back to our graph here. 120 candles, so remember candles were on the x-axis, so 120 is going to be right here. So anything on this vertical line right here would work, okay? So, you know, you could say 20, you could say 40, you could say 60, you could say 80. In all honesty, you could say any value here between, um, between zero and 80, all right? So, any value between zero and 80 flower arrangements sold would work, okay? All right? Because we sold 120 candles at $10 each, we're already over $1,000. So anything extra just gets us more money in the fundraiser, okay? Pause the video here. Give B a try. I'm going to tell you in advance there are more than two inequalities for this system. Uh, there are going to be three. So try to come up with three inequalities, graph those, and then answer the questions that follow. Okay, now for problem B here. Uh, you need to earn at least $200 a week. You've got two jobs, one at a grocery store, one giving piano lessons. Okay. Uh, your hour, hourly rate for both is provided here. Uh, the grocery store requires you to work at least eight hours a week, and you want to work less than, excuse me, no more than 20 hours total for the week. Okay, no more than 20 hours total. All right, so always... Want to define our variables first, so I'm going to use X as hours worked at the grocery store and Y as hours worked uh, giving piano lessons, all right? So, first thing, work no more than 20 hours, okay? No more than 20 hours means combined we're going to work less than or equal to 20 hours, all right? 
Grocery requires at least eight hours. So remember, grocery is X here, so X has to be greater than or equal to eight. And then finally, we're gonna go with the $200 a week here. We wanna earn at least $200. All right, so 15X, so that's the money earned working at the grocery store, plus 10Y, this is the money earned giving piano lessons, has to be greater than or equal to 200, okay? So again, on your paper, you wanna graph these inequalities. I'm gonna use Desmos again and then we'll see the region that overlaps, okay? All right, so first inequality, okay, no more than 20 hours. So again, think of this as non-negative. You can't work negative hours. So we're looking in quadrant one here only, all right? So intercepts are both gonna be 20. That's how we come up with that graph, all right? X greater than or equal to eight. So X is eight here, greater than or equal to means we're shading to the right, okay? So you can see our region change a little bit now this purple-ish triangle would be our uh, solution set, but we don't have our third inequality yet, so let's put that in there, okay? So 15x plus 10y greater than or equal to 200. So my intercepts here on this purple line are going to be 0, 20, okay? And 13.33, okay? That would be the x-intercept. That's the amount of hours you would have to work at the grocery store alone just to earn the $200, okay? So the overlap of these three looks like this shape right here. Again, we're not going negative, so we're looking at this region right here, okay? So let's go back to our questions, okay? Identify and interpret two possible solutions for this situation. Assume you can only work a whole number of hours at each job, okay? So the first one I did was 10 hours at the grocery store and 7 hours giving piano lessons. So 10 and 7. So 10 here, up to 7 here. That's in our ring. That's in our, our uh, region here that works for all three inequalities. So 10 and 7 would work. I also said that... 15 hours at the grocery store and three hours of piano lessons would work. Okay, you might have come up with different answers, but 15 would work with anything here from zero to five. Okay, so any of those would work. Again, any values you want to use, use whole numbers in this region would work. Okay, finally, there's one more question. It says, use the graph to determine if you can work eight hours at the grocery store and six hours teaching piano, okay? Eight and six. So we want to look at our graph here. We want to go to eight. If we go up to six, we're right here, okay? Eight, six, we're about right there, okay? But notice we're outside of the region, so that would not be a solution, okay? So that's how we uh, apply systems of inequalities. There's a lot to it, but... You know, I think you guys can do it.